Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Singer, and welcome to our YouTube channel, GILT, G-Y-L-T, get your life together. On this channel, we're gonna talk a lot about getting a job, figuring out what you wanna be when you grow up, if you're already grown up, what do you wanna be next, how do you wanna get that next job, how do I interview, how do I interview on the phone, how do I network, how do I figure things out, how do I get my life together, how do you get your life together? So here's what I need you to do. I need you to subscribe to the channel, I need you to leave comments because with your comments, we get better. I need you to turn on your post notifications and please like this video. And if for some reason you don't like the video, go back to the comment section and tell us why so we can just keep getting better. We're gonna to try to help you in the world of crazy jobs, careers, and what's next for you. Over the past 20 years, I've probably met with, I don't know, maybe 1,500 people. And all of them are looking for help either in a job search, figuring out what they wanna do, how do I get, get, take an interview? How do I do an interview on the phone? How do I network with people, etc.? One of the most common questions I get from people, either just starting out or even mid-career, is what I wanna do. Who am I? What kind of job do I wanna have? And I always ask all of them the same question, regardless of where you are in your career. What are you doing in five years? Now, I know other people might ask you this question, but I think we have a bit of a different approach to it, so just hear me out here. We're gonna start with little steps, and think about what it does for us. The whole process is, what am I doing in five years? And then we're gonna step back and see if we're in a position or if we can get in a position to get us there in five years. So let's start with the first piece. In five years, what's your job title? What's your job title? Or are you an entrepreneur? What is it you're doing in five years? Do you own a business, etc.? So stay with me for a second. What's your job title? In five years, I wanna be the of this. I want to be the director of finance. I want to be the manager of HR. I want to have my own business in a city selling this. I want to have a software company. I want to be a salesperson at this level. What do I want to be doing in five years? Now, why am I asking you that? If you want to be the director of finance in a company in five years, my first question is, are you currently working for that company? If not, that's a strategic move. How do we get to that company? If it's at the company you're at, where are you right now? And what does it mean to get to that level of, let's say, director? In most companies, Fortune 100, Fortune 500, a director level has people working for them. Usually they've been in management for a few years already. They have a certain level or degree in school, maybe even an MBA, maybe a master's in finance in this case. So my question would be is, here you are at year one in a five-year journey, are you on the path to get there? Well, I'm a finance person level one. Great. How many people do you know that in five years got to this director level? Well, actually it's common in my company. Oh, I see what you mean. Not common in my company. Well, where do they get in five years? I think you're getting the idea of where we're going. So where do you wanna be in five years? Start with a job title, number one. Next, how much money are you making in five years? I'm making a million dollars. Uh, okay, how much are you making now? How are you gonna get there? I wanna make $100,000. Great, where are you? How are we gonna get there? The interplay between these two questions is the following. If I wanna be the director of finance and I wanna make $150,000, well, the first obvious question is, does a director of finance make $150,000? If you don't know that, then that's some research that we have to do here. If I wanna be a partner in my law firm, if I wanna have my CPA and be on track to becoming a partner, or a senior in a firm, if I'm having my own business and this is where I want to be, if I'm a real estate agent and I want to be at this level of selling, how do I get there and how much money will I be making? Am I looking at going up and down and up and down or am I looking at a gradual step up, if you will, to get to where I want to be? A basic question, but an important question. How much money am I making? Now you ask yourself with where I am now, what's the path to get there? So if you say, we'll use that example again, I want to be the director of finance and I want to be making $125,000 a year in five years. Well, currently, I'm an analyst in finance, okay, and I'm making $52,000 a year starting salary. How do I map out my career to get there and where do I want to be now? I don't even have a job now. I've just graduated. I have a finance degree. I have a business degree. I have an accounting degree. Where do I want to work so I can get that first level job that gets me to that level I want to be at in five years? What's my title? How much money am I making? The next question, and these are the three basic questions I want you to ask is, what's your life situation in five years? I have no idea. I don't know where I'm going to be. 
where do you think, where do you want to be? What's your fantasy? Is your fantasy that you're single, living the fun life, no responsibilities, etc.? Or I have a family, I have responsibilities, things that I need to do at that point. Maybe I have children, maybe I don't. Spouse, don't, as we discussed a second ago. Why is that important? Because it's important to know what you think you're going to need at that point. Now, maybe you're saying with the other thing, well, I just want to be a financial analyst too. And I think I only want to make about, I don't know, $60,000. But I think I'm going to be married in five years and maybe I'll have a second kid or maybe I'll have two kids, maybe I'll have three kids. I don't know what I'm going to do. But if you do those things, is that responsible at that level? Is your spouse making more money than you? Is your spouse making any money? These are important questions to ask. They also force you to think responsibly and maturely. Let's say you're mid-career. You're already a mid-level manager, but you're not happy where you are. Where do you want to be in five years realistically? Can you do it at the company that you're at? Can you do it in the business you're in? Let's say you own a business, you own a franchise. Can that business or franchise get you where you want to be in five years? It's a very good question to ask. It helps ground you and then look towards the future. What are some steps that you can take to then think about this and not make yourself crazy when you're thinking about this process? Now think about where you were thinking about in five years. We're using that finance example. Maybe you said in five years, you actually want to be in human resources. Maybe you said in five years, you want to have your own business. What are you doing now that's going to get you to a place where you have your own business in five years? What connections are you making? What are you learning about the business that you want to be in? Are you somebody that can take the type of risk that's necessary to be in your own business? A great way to learn about these things is look at that five-year picture of yourself. I am a this, I'm living here, and this is potentially my life situation, and this is the money I'd like to be making at that point. Do you know anybody who's doing that? Is there somebody in your company that looks exactly like that? or kind of like that. So I know somebody in my company who's a director of finance and I think they're making this much money. I don't know what their family situation is. Well, can I meet that person? Can I speak to them? Hey, how long did it take you to get here? What kind of a degree do you have? How did you get there? Another wonderful way to do this, and I talk about this later on, some other things we'll discuss, is look at help wanted ads or look at openings at your company or other companies or in general and see what are the requirements for the job that you picked. Once again, stick with the example of director of finance. Well, it may say requirement, director of finance, four-year degree. That kind of makes sense. Master's in finance. Oh, don't have a master's degree. Or MBA with specifics in finance. Oh, that's interesting. I should get that. Or maybe it says no advanced degree necessary, but five years of experience, 10 years of experience. Suddenly you're walking outside the model of what you've looked at. Then maybe look at what is your salary range. What does it say in that area? Salary range, 85 to 110. But that's not where I want it. 110 to 180. Oh, maybe that's where I wanted it to be. These types of things will give you a better idea of what's happening and what's going on. An amazing purpose to this exercise and what it helps you do is get grounded and start looking realistically at the world. If you're just starting a job search and you sit down with a friend and they say, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I think I'd like to get into middle management, uh, possibly make about $100,000 a year, like to have a job nearby, etc. That sounds wonderful. Uh, do you have a college degree? Well, I'm just finishing stuff up at the local. Uh, okay. Um, and when do you want to have this job? Well, I think once I start looking this, you start to realize that you're not grounded in reality. Now, if you say in five years, I have to be making a million dollars, well, the realistic thing is either who's giving it to you, whose business are you taking over that's already making that and not messing up their business, or realistically, how much risk are you willing to take? And risk is the final thing that we'll discuss right here. The idea of taking risk is the following. How much are you willing to put out there of yourself for potential huge payoff, but not have anything right now? Let's give, a, let's give a great example of this. People that get into sales, but get into sales maybe with not a lot of experience, maybe they don't have a college degree, maybe they do have a college degree, but they have no sales experience. Oftentimes they'll look into a job that's all about commission, but no base salary. Or commission and what we'll call a draw, which basically means you're borrowing money from the company against future commissions, but you do have to pay it back. That's a huge risk. 
can you afford to be living with either no money coming in or money coming in that you have to pay back with the thought of, I believe in myself and the product and the business that I'm now involved in so much that I'm gonna be able to make all of this back and then go beyond in commissions. Some people in real estate have that level of success. Some people in other businesses have that level of success. You always hear about the people that are successful. You very rarely hear about the people that are rough time. If it was such an easy business and everybody was making a million dollars every year, believe me, you would have heard about it and everyone would be doing it. So you have to look at what are the risks, what are the risks that you are willing to take. So once again, when you're thinking about either what do I want to be when I grow up, what do I do right now, what career might I change to, where am I going? Ask yourself the hard questions, write them down, think about it. What's my title in five years? How much money am I making? What's my situation personally, my family? How much risk am I willing to take? And what's the realistic picture of where I am and what's the place that I could go? Now, I'm not here to destroy people's dreams. I'm not here to be a downer of any sort. I'm here to say, take a look realistically. If you're the type of person that has huge dreams and tremendous belief in yourself, I'm in favor of all of those things, but put together a plan. It just doesn't happen by accident. If you read a lot of books that are out there about success, people that have interviewed tens of thousands of people that they want to know, how did you become successful? What have you done? There are various traits and habits that are in each person. Look at these books, understand them. Stuff doesn't happen by accident. People put in hard work, long hours, and they take a lot of time to learn things. Anybody that looks as successful as you want to be did not get there without putting in the hard work. And you have to be willing to put in the hard work to get there. I'm Andrew Singer, welcome to Guilt, and I look forward to speaking with you again. Thanks.